People say, well, then how do you get black people and white people? Actually, there are no truly black people or white people. People say, I'm a white person. I don't want to be a white person, to be honest. Not right now. I've got too much to do. See, look, I can prove to you I'm not a white person. That's white. If I look like that, you'd be calling 911. <laughs> do you realize if I got somebody up here that you said is a black person, you put a black sheet of paper beside them, true black, you realize they're not black. Everybody is brown. We, there's one ba basic pigment, it's called melanin, two forms of it. It's more complex than this, but this gives you the basic principle idea. If big A and big B mean a lot of melanin, little A and little B mean a little bit of melanin, if you had all big A's and big B's, you'd have dark skin. Little A's and little B's, light skin. If you had a mixture, middle brown, the world's population, the majority, if you look at the bell curve in regard to skin shade, the majority are middle brown. And to help us understand, this is um, a section through our skin, and the top layer here called the epidermis. At the bottom of the epidermis, there are cells called melanocytes that have little organelles in them, melanosomes, that produce packages of melanin. And so, depending on what genes you have, if you have genes that say you produce a lot of melanin, you'll produce a lot and you'll be dark, dark skin, or genes that produce not so much melanin. When you tan, you will produce melanin, st it'll stimulate uh, your skin to produce melanin to a maximum that your genes tell you. It's very easy to understand. Those differences in skin shade, not skin color, skin shade, are just minor differences. And they are. Genetically, they're very minor. You see, what shade was Adam and Eve skin? Not what color. Everyone's the same color. And I'm going to challenge us, and we need to change our terminology. You, you don't talk about what color someone is, it's what shade they are. We shouldn't be talking about races because of Darwin's ideas. Let's talk about people groups. There are people that say, there's a group of colored people. I've heard Al Sharpton get up on, on TV and say, now people of color, and I say, oh, that's everyone. Do you realize everyone in this room is a colored person? If you're not, you've got a problem, okay? Everyone's related to everyone else. Do you realize what a difference it makes when you look at somebody that you don't like and say, they're my relative? And then ask yourself, are they going to heaven? Do you want your family in heaven? See, it makes a big difference the way you look at people when you realize we're all one race, we're all one family. And you know, there, there's a lot of applications that, that we can make. For instance, I was at a church and uh, a man come up on stage after I spoke and he said, you mean to tell me there really are no truly black people? I said, that's right. Huh. Because he had very dark shade skin. And he said to me, well, I voted for President Obama because he was black, and now you're telling me that was a stupid reason to vote for somebody. I said, yeah, that's a stupid reason to vote for somebody. <laughs> Be because, you know, and you know, as Christians, I use that as an example for the audience, and I said, do you realize, as Christians, you don't vote for somebody because they're black or white, which is not correct anyway, and you don't, we shouldn't vote for somebody because they're Democrat or Republican or Independent. Do you know as Christians what we should be doing, what we should train our kids to understand? Look, there's no one perfect in the world, and, and, and politicians, you know that. Uh, and what we should be doing is though saying, as Christians, I want to be salt and light, but what I need to do is judge whatever anyone's saying, the, 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 what they say, their behavior, etc., against the absolute authority of the Word of God, then that should drive how I vote. That's being a Christian. You know, uh, another church I was at, uh, was, I remember it distinctly. A man and his wife were sitting with the pastor over on my left, and the man had very dark skin, the pastor had very light skin. People would call that an interracial marriage. There's no such thing as interracial marriage. There's only one race. Biologically, there's no such thing. So when we say that's an interracial couple, what a load of nonsense. There are no interracial couples in the sense of biology. There are spiritually, but not biologically, right? There's a big difference. And I remember the man turned to a pastor and he says, this is great, I'm just pleased to know I'm not married to a white woman. <laughs> so there you are. And, and you know, there's other applications. You know when you go to the doctor and, and, and they give you these long forms and you've got to fill out all these stupid things, and one of them is, what race are you? I encourage everyone, write down Adams. <laughs> when it says other, Adams. And when the person at the desk says, 
excuse me, what's this Adam's race? Adam? Didn't you know Adam was the first man? Did you know we all come from Adam? God created Adam and Eve, and we're all descendants of Adam and Eve, and Adam sinned. And because of sin, that's why death came into the world. That's why we're going to die. You're going to die. You know you're going to die, right? And it's because of sin. And that's why God sent his son. You know the babe in the manger? Die on a cross, be raised from the dead, offers a free gift of salvation. You need to, you need to repent. See the gospel in 30 seconds right there. <laughs> Hey, but can you imagine if Christians started doing this sort of thing? You start to be a witness in the community. You say, I'm going to help lead the way in regard to these issues. And then those songs we learn. Oh, who remembers this one? Jesus loves little children, all the children of the world, red and yellow, black and white, all are precious in his sight. You remember that one? Actually teaches kids wrong ideas. Imagine if we taught generations of kids this. Jesus loves the little children, all the children of the world. Shades of brown from dark to light, all are precious in his sight. Now that gives you the right idea. And so, when we think about Adam and Eve, if Adam and Eve had all little A's and little B's, the whole world would be like that. If Adam and Eve had all big A's and big B's, the whole world would be like that. But that lacks the genetic variation we see. And so it makes much more sense that Adam and Eve are in the middle with a mixture, the maximum genetic diversity that God created, just like he did in each of the kinds. And then you get a whole range of variations from that. And that's why, for instance, around the world, there's lots of examples of twins like these. These are from Australia and these primarily from England. Uh, there's lots of examples of twins like this. It's very easy to understand because it depends on the genetic diversity in, in the parents and what combinations they got. And so, over time, because of the Tower of Babel, you could get some groups that only had big A's and big B's. On their own, that's all they're going to produce, dark-skinned people. Over time, you might end up some groups that only have little A's and little B's, only produce light-skinned people. For them, remember, poodles with poodles only give poodles, right? For, for those people to produce kids that had um, a range of skin shade, they're going to have to mix with somebody who's got some of those other genes from the original genetic diversity that God put there. Very easy to understand. And then eye shape, sort of similar. Um, one of the major factors in eye shape is the amount of fat in your eyelids. It's just a minor genetic variation. That's all it is. And as ABC News said, even in 1998, what the facts show is there are differences among us, but they stem from culture, not race. And people, the answer to racism is simple. It's the true history of the world. That's the answer to racism. To see people saved, one to the Lord, and to build their thinking on the Bible and to recognize we're all one race, we're all equal before God, we're all sinners, we all need the same solution, Jesus Christ. And you know, when anyone says to me, whether it's in Australia about the Aborigines or anyone else, and they say, yeah, but we were so wronged in our history, and look what happened in history, and look what these people did in history. Do you know what I believe we should say? Do you know what? None of us deserve anything. We didn't deserve what God did for us. We committed high treason against the God of creation. We sinned against God. We, we don't even deserve to exist. Do you realize what he did for us? He stepped into history to pay the penalty for our sin. The, oh, woe is us the, the, that we're sinners, but God wants to save us from what we did. That's the answer. Instead of looking at wrongs of the past and all the rest of it, the answer is we need to see, understand who we are before a holy God.